All right, we have a new question here uh, from one of my physics students. This one's going to be a bit tough, and we're going to go on a bit of a journey with our equations. This isn't the only way to do it, but it's going to get you a lot of experience using equations and seeing how they fit together. So, a dentist uses a small mirror that, when 1.70 centimeters from a tooth, produces an upright image that is 3.06 times larger than the actual tooth. Calculate the radius of curvature of the mirror. So the first thing I want to do is start off drawing a picture. That's what I'll do with almost all physics problems. So with ray diagrams, it's good to use a ruler. And the way I'm going to do this is ray diagrams usually start with a straight line straight through the center. And then I'm going to represent a mirror. We know it's a mirror because it tells us it's not a lens. So a mirror, something like this. Now you not, might not know straight away whether it's a concave mirror or a convex mirror. But this is one of the things that you have to memorize. Let's say that the object is on this side. Let's just draw the object in. The object was 1.70 centimeters from the mirror. 1.7 is right there. I'm going to draw this to scale on the um, horizontal axis. I'm just going to make it about that tall. I'm not going to draw a tooth. I'm just going to draw it as an arrow because it can be any object. And arrows are nice and easy. If the object is on the concave side, that's this side here, then as the image, or as the light comes in, it's going to hit the um, mirror and bounce back through some focal point. Now I don't know where that focal point is right now, but if the image was, sorry, if the object was on the convex side, that's this side over here, then as the light comes in, it would be refre reflected outwards on an angle like that, and they would not converge. So that's why I want it on this side here, on the concave side. So what information do we know? That's, that's all I can draw at this stage. We'll get to drawing the rest of it later. So what information do we know? Well, we know that the tooth is 1.7 centimeters from the mirror. So I'll call that the distance of the object. DO equals 1.70 centimeters. I also know it's an upright image. That's not going to help with the calculations, but it will help with drawing our um, diagram. And I know that it is the image is 3.06 times larger than the tooth, than the object. Now, which equation am I going to use? Well, I'm just going to write down all the equations that I know for ray diagrams. The first one is magnification equals negative di over do, that's the image distance to the uh, divided by the object distance, and that's equal to the image height versus the object height. Height here being size. Look at that. That's what we have there. I also know that the focal length is equal to the radius divided by 2, and I know that 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. Now coming back to the question, I want to know which, uh, what, what am I trying to find here? Well, it says calculate the radius of curvature of the mirror. So I look through my equations, radius of curvature, there it is. F equals R over 2. Now I can rearrange this to give me... Well, I just want the radius on its own. So if I put a 2 on this side, and a 2 on this side, then this 2 and this 2, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So it's 1 times radius equals 2f. Now, I don't, uh, yeah, 2f equals radius. Brilliant. But hold on. We don't know what the focal point, is, uh, the focal length is right now. There's the focal length. We could use this one in here. But how do we find that? Well, 
We want f, not 1 over f. So let's just do some, a little bit of rearranging here. We get 1 over f equals, well on this side I want a common denominator. Now the easiest common denominator, or the easiest way to find a com common denominator, is to multiply these two together. So what happens if I do DODI on the bottom there? Just looking at this first one. Now I want this to equal this. So this has to be 1 over DO. How do I turn this with a DI on the bottom into that? Well, just put a DI on the top. DI divided by DI is just 1, so this equals 1 over DO. To that, I'm going to add this section. Again, I want the common denominator, so it's DO, DI. Now again, I want this and this to be the same. I have a DO, DI on the bottom here, a DI on the bottom here. A 1 on top, so to make a 1 on top here, do. Do divided by do, it's just 1. So it's 1 over di. <coughs> because they now have the same denominator, I can put them together. Do, di on the bottom, and on the top we have di plus do. That's 1 over f. I want f, not 1 over f. So now that they have a common denominator and it's just one fraction, I can flip this upside down, giving me f equals do di over di plus do. Now, I couldn't do that before up here. I can't just go f equals do plus di. That doesn't work, as we see down here. It's different. So we have to give them, the, we have to put it into one fraction before we can flip it. So, do we know everything in here? We know DO, that's 1.7. We know DO, that's 1.7. So these two we know. DI? Oh, hold on, we don't know that, do we? There's a DI. Let's see if we can use that one. Again, I'm going to take this formula. And I'm going to rearrange it. So I'm just going to leave the M off for now and just look at these bits here. So this gives us uh, negative di over do equals hi over ho. I know what do is. That's 1.70. And I know that the image height is 3.06 times the height of the object. Do I know the height of the object in centimeters? No. So I'll just call it one tooth, one tooth high. So units of teeth. One height of the object, 3.06 height image. That gives us negative di equals, well, I want to get rid of this, so I'll times both sides by do. It gives me hi over ho times do. Can I figure this out now? Well, the image height is 3.06 times larger than the object height. DO is 1.70 centimeters. And that's pretty much it. Now you notice at this point, I haven't picked up a calculator at all. All I've done is just look at my equations. And it wasn't till that last bit that I started putting numbers in either. It was all rearranging. Now I'm going to get out my calculator, the one with low batteries, and using this section here, I can do 3.06, oops, 3.06 times 1.70 gives us 5.202, equals 5.202, and that's in centimeters, because we have a centimeters there. So that tells us that negative di equals, that's a negative there, 5.202. So di must be equal to negative 5.202 centimeters. Take a look at our, our image up here. <clears throat> negative 5.202. What does negative mean? Well, this here, where the object exists, that's where the actual tooth is, this is our real side. Anything on this side is positive. Our image, though, is virtual. 
it's on this side and we can tell because of that negative so i'm going to take out my ruler measure out 5.202 that's right about there so i know that my distance to my object is going to be right there but what's my height well if this is a height of one then this must be a height of 3.06. So I'll just measure this. I put this as 4 millimeters. So this one must be 3.06 times that, which is around about 12 millimeters. Carefully drawing that in. 12 millimeters. Oops. Right there. Cool. So that's the second line. The one on the right. I messed up a little bit there. <clears throat> okay now what do we do well we know di now i'll just put a square around that because we know that we've calculated that i used the wrong color that's okay di is negative 5.202 over here now i can use that in this equation the f equation because i now know this number dr do is 1.7 the i is negative 5.202, and we have the same numbers on the bottom. So f equals, that's the wrong color again. Let's try this one. f equals do 1.70 centimeters. di negative 5.202 centimeters. Divided by di again, negative 5.202 centimeters. Oops plus uh, 1.7 centimeters. Getting the calculator out now, and only now that I've set up my equation, I have 1.7 times 5.202, 8 point, oh, that's meant to be a negative, negative 5.202 gives us negative 8, point eight four three four that's the top one what's the units there we have a centimeter times a centimeter gives us centimeters squared divide that by negative five negative five point two oh two plus one point seven zero gives us negative 3.502 and that's a centimeter plus a centimeter gives us just centimeters looking at those units centimeters squared divided by centimeters that cancels out with just one of those and we're just left with centimeters <clears throat> negative 8.8434 divided by the answer gives us 2.8 2.525 and that's in centimeters so this here is our focal length coming back up to our drawing up here our diagram 2.525 that's around about from the mirror that's around about there that there is our focal point capital F for focal point, lowercase f for focal distance. And what I can do with that is, with my green pen I'll use for light, if we did this right, I should be able to get a line through the focal point, through the top of the um, object. Oh, no, that's not right. I should be able to go uh, take my light from the top of the object, parallel with this black line, parallel that's like that that's going in towards the mirror and then the light bounces back through the focal point bam like that and the light goes off in that direction now if i trace this backwards i should be able to let's see where that lines up trace it backwards 
with a dotted line. It's not a very straight dotted line. Bam, right at the tip. So that's one of our ray lines. Usually we draw three ray lines, but right now I'm just going to draw that one just to save us on time. Last equation. 2f equals r. Now I like to have what I'm solving for on the left hand side, so I'm just going to write, uh, flip that over. It's going to be exactly the same. r equals 2f. Now I know what f is. I just worked it out. There it is. 2 times 2.5 2524718 centimeters. Now that I've written down my equation, now and only now will I pick up my calculator. So it's F, that's F there, times 2 gives us the radius 5.05048537 centimeters. And am I done? I am not done because the question numbers in the question, we have three significant figures. Three significant figures, that means our answer should be in three significant figures. So final answer is the radius of curvature equals 5.05 centimeters. Now it's really important that I don't round to three significant figures until the end. I'll show you why. If I'd rounded this one here to three sig figs, we would have had two point, well three sig figs would be five three, times that by two to give us the radius, 5.06 centimeters, and that's, sorry, you can't see that, and that is the wrong answer. All right, hope that was fun. Any questions or comments? Or complaints leave them in the comment in the comments below I know this was a long one but we did get through a lot of algebra in that so good job see you next time